This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway around the world, is Jared Morgan. G'day, Pinheads. How are you going? Uh, we are doing well today, I Let believe. Let me try and clean my screen again. Yes, yes. So, so Jared, <laughs> in case you wonder, Jared's having some interesting graphical anomalies happening. Uh, we were just kind of chatting pre-show here. and So if you see his lips turn funny colors or, uh, you know, suddenly he looks like an expressionist painter uh, got a hold of his image, um, that's that's what's going on. It's... Um, it's it's uh, some oddities with uh, our the the very excellent OBS Ninja um, product uh, that we uh, we use to stream. Um, this is the first time I've seen weirdness like this happening with it, so I'm, I'm sure it's problem at my end, and it's probably to do with the Australian internet. <laughs> I was going to say um, it's probably your end there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely it definitely would not be OBS Ninja because it's a rock solid program. We love it. It's so good. Um, and it's free to use. Uh, and it's free, so, which is the right price for us. Yes, that it is. <laughs> um, Jared, I went and did something that I've not done since beginning of November. Can uh, you guess? Oh, I think I might have an idea. You went to see a movie. I did. I did. That was... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I went and saw uh, Quiet Place Part 2. And... Oh, right. I saw that's coming out. Yeah, yeah, I really want to. It? That was one of those that I really wanted to go see in a theater because in the cinema, the yeah. first one was one of my favorite uh, theater going experiences in a very long time because mm. it was a packed house and the crowd was dead silent and the energy in the room just really enhanced the movie, which was already good to begin with, but it was just mm. made it that much. Mm, so I was like, okay, for sure, I want to go see this in a movie theater. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I went opening weekend in prime time, and not quite the same experience. No, because <laughs> there's well, no one in there. Yeah, well, literally the <clears throat> the way they do seating is whatever row they're seating people in, nobody in front, nobody behind you, for the rows, and then oh. you can't have anybody within two seats side to side of you. Oh, right? okay. So everybody was very spread out. Um, mm. Then you're also supposed to wear your wearing masks the entire time, but there's a loophole, and that when loophole you're is if you're eating. So I happen to have a free popcorn reward on my uh, on my card, and so I was like, "Aha!" So I sat there. So you got there. your eight kilograms of popcorn <laughs> that you get at a movie. It was, theater, it was just just but... small. No, I just got the small popcorn, which which I'm is sorry. still ridiculous. No, what's ridiculous <laughs> is the prices of popcorn. Yeah, it's like Side 10 bucks. note here, it was eight dollars for a small popcorn. Eight eight dollars US too. Eight dollars admission was twelve. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I don't know if those prices because I rarely buy concessions. I don't know if those prices suddenly jumped up even higher to kind of like help them recover from you know COVID probably and not having the the things. But I was like, <clears throat> popcorn literally is. Pure profit a couple for a movie of cents. theater. It's a yeah. couple of cents, if that. I mean, it is yeah. pure profit. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to your soda, which they'll pay like 25 cents for the cup. But mm. they get the syrup for free. <laughs> oh, do they? Is yes. that how it works over there? Yeah. Any, oh, they, any, so they any, any place you go to that has the uh, brand of the soda post, on the cup. The post mixed, yeah. Oh, you're, right. getting, you're getting the soda for free. Oh, if right, you're the, okay. I mean, you know, whoever is the owner, that, basically, yeah, the owner. Um, so that's oh, why concessions that's is where the movie theater makes all of its money, um, because mm. they have to share away too much of the of the box office with the studio. Right. So that's why uh, I never felt guilty theater hopping, because mm. as somebody that used to work at a theater told me, uh, so long as you buy a soda from us, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh right okay yeah because <laughs> um, mm -hmm. they're like we weren't making much money off the box office anyway <laughs> so um anyway that's an interesting fact uh, so anyway yeah i, I, I spent the entire I movie like this going like this with the popcorn though 
um, but I'm eating. But um, I, I need to have no mask. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that you weren't doing it because you don't like masks. Because I know you, you. No, you want to know why I was that. doing it? Because why? I wear glasses, and, and when you can't you wear see the mask, anything. It fogs up your glasses, so it's either that mm. or pull the mask below my nose, which I was doing that also. Um, mm, yeah, I know. Yeah. I masks are a pain, a necessary pain, but a pain. Yes. Um, but still, it was it was good to uh, to be back there and uh, feel like a normal a normal human again, watching a normal movie in a normal theater. Exactly. Uh, mm. And based is, off and of what I looked boarding. at for the summer of what's coming out, th- there's only a few things that I'm willing to go to a movie theater for, regardless. Mm. So I figured, mm. well, let's take advantage of one of those. <laughs> mm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Exactly. All right, um, we're gonna dive right in here. Uh, we we once again are out of sync with uh, with Zen. <laughs> mm, we are <laughs> with when they're doing their pinball show, and so therefore uh, it wasn't this last week, but the week before. That that's right. We are a little their, behind. A little behind, uh, but that's okay. That means uh, if you guys have. Had a chance to digest, and uh, if you were, you know, following it, interesting. Uh, otherwise, if you weren't interested, then hey, we're news. <laughs> That's right, mm-hmm. we'll, and we'll you're hearing it first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's start off with the first thing that was uh, rather a nice surprise, and that was that for the Star Wars VR owners, Zen went ahead and uploaded a new well. New to the game. Uh, new to VR. New, new to, to VR. VR. Uh, <laughs> table for free. It was yep. just an automatic for table, which, free. Was, which was rather cool. And that was the uh, Han Solo uh, table. Yeah. A table that I realized I barely played <laughs> previously. Mm. It's, um, it, it's, the thing about this table is that overall, there's actually nothing too bad with it. It's, uh, it's fun enough to shoot. It's a bit of a stop starter. So, and it's unfortunately a bit of a spellathon as well. Well, um, let's let's throw the image up here and mm, to remind just in case people you aren't... of what it looks like. <clears throat> so that is what it looks like for those who didn't remember. You've got uh, it's a fan layout. You've got uh, orbit ramp uh, or a uh, uh, dead end to a uh, space worm. <laughs> yes. Or uh, not really an orbit. It's more of a uh, uh, yeah, actually, take it back. That is an orbit, and that one there is a ramp that comes back to the feed the flippers. And then you've got mm. a flipper up here that shoots a ramp uh, in this general vicinity, and which will also send the ball back down the habit trail. And then this ramp up here can feed to a... Uh, oh, excuse me, it doesn't feed to that. This ramp over here feeds to this saucer, and there's a flipper up here, which you can knock the ball over, and it enters in the falcon the falcon rotates uh if it's pointing towards you that opens up mini game two different ones at the top um Mm. and then you've got the uh, cantina that rotates in the background which i'd completely forgotten about because when i play in cabinet mode you can't see that at all (laughs) Mm -hmm. you can't no but in vr you can certainly see it so that was nice it's no it's not a uh a bad layout it's but, fun to shoot. Like you but, can, you you always find a shot on the play field, which is good. It's fun. I think it ends up for me too. Like it's too easy to get in that in the um, sinkhole. Um, it's a gaping sinkhole, and it takes up so much of the area. Which sinkhole are you talking about? The one right next to the um the the, this the is main the mid, sinkhole. Mid played field. Yeah, the mid play field. Right, one, right below the desto. So big. Um, and it's sort of in a really awkward position as well for me. Like it is. It's not the easiest thing to hit from the right flipper. No, because uh, for some reason it, you wind up hitting this post over here a lot, it's and it's bouncing away. It's a definitely very a lift left flipper only. Same goes for there's a ramp underneath the Falcon. Actually, that's the ramp. It's the ramp underneath the Falcon is what feeds uh, the flipper up here, not, uh, yeah. not this side ramp. Um, that ramp underneath the Falcon <clears throat> is a blind ramp, so you have no idea. W- I'm assuming it's gigantically yeah, it's wide and just like funnels yeah. the ball or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But again, very difficult to hit with the right flipper. Um, it's definitely more of a left flipper shot. Mm. 
Um, oh, and I forgot. There's another uh, fourth flipper right over here. This little mini flipper. Now, yeah, this is where I started having issues. So when I played it regularly, and I I did test between doing the VR version and this version, because remember mm-hmm. this version is now wholly made in Unreal Engine. That's right. It's been essentially converted over. And they've got some tinkering <clears throat> to do. <laughs> they got some tinkering. You say? What are you? What are you uh, okay. alluding to? So there? first off, when you shoot this uh, saucer here with the uh, space worm, right? Mm-hmm. It ejects the ball from here, and you're going to hit this flipper. You're going to shoot all the way across, and over here on the left side, there's another sinkhole that you want yeah. to hit because that, if you land it in there, raises up a third pop bumper that if you and hit you the pop bumpers pop enough it. times, then you open up the mini game of flying through an asteroid field. Oh, that's how you do it. All that right, I was how wondering how to do that. Which I can do in Pinball FX3. Because so the, you timing, it in and just do it. the timing is it, <clears throat> it ejects the ball and you visually have enough time to see the ball eject and then flip. And it's just a quick bit of timing to get it there. But more often than not, you can actually make the shot. Mm-hmm. In VR, if you don't eject or if you don't flip, the second it ejects out, you're not hitting that shot. This is what I found ultra frustrating on the collectibles table it suffers from the same problem um <clears throat> when you're trying to shoot you know you do the death star loop it comes around back down and that little flipper yes the little you go flipper. And shoot it mm-hmm. it's the timing on those those running shots that seem to be out in unreal like they they just feel well they're completely unforgivable mm. You but either hit it or know. you're wildly <clears throat> off. And here's where it becomes the, the next issue that I had on the table, which is it's this upper saucer flip. Mm. So you have a flasher light. And right so there. hard. I literally <clears throat> was thinking, because, uh, again, I hadn't played this table in forever. So when I'm in VR and I'm playing it, and I keep on getting the ball into this thing, and for the life of me, I could not flip the ball. Half the time, the ball was past my flipper before I even bothered to flip. So then I Absolutely. started trying to flip early, and I just kept on bashing into this uh, side wall here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I know I have to get it up here, but why can I not get it? Why can I not get it? So I went to see if it was that difficult uh, in FX3. It's not. It's Nine times case. out of ten, I managed to hit the ball over here with no issue whatsoever. And the Absolutely. thing is, is it should be that relatively simple. It's a wide mm. target, <clears throat> and it's a hole that is for super jackpots. It's a hole that you should be able to make uh, relatively easy, uh, frequently, I should say, right? Yeah. But I was nailing it over and over and over again. I go back into to VR, still couldn't do it. So I started, no. I was like, "There's where's my audible warning? Where's, you know, there's got to be a visual warning. So I, I was listening for that too. Yeah, I was like, all I can see is a flasher. It flashes really fast. It doesn't go bing, bing, well, bing, then shoot. This flasher in VR is not nearly as prominent as it is in FX3. Uh, right. In FX3, it seems to really like pop. And in VR, right. it, it, it was kind of diminished. So I was really having to concentrate. And it does a real quick bop, 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 blink. And then it releases yep. the ball. I was found that I had to flip. As soon as that thing blinked off, flip. I was not looking at the ball. I was looking at the light. That's the only way that I started making that shot. And that and is... That's not, that's that's not, not right. how you should be playing pinball. No. Like, it's the ball that gives you the timing, not a light. Like, the light should alert you to the fact that a ball is about to eject. But it's not It's it's not a timing point. Like, it's it's really frustrating me at the moment. Because literally this is, kind is the of same a, thing that's doing it. Yeah, and, and this, this eject is basically just kind of going... Bleh. It's not like it's going, bow, right? It's just it's kind not of a throwing burping. it out. It's just burping it out more or it's less. It's a soft eject. Yeah, so you yeah. have time to flip, and currently but that's it seems, not. It feels like it's just going straight through the flipper. Like you're flipping it, and it's just no, nah, it's not actually touching the ball. Yeah. And maybe that is actually what's happening. Um, I don't know. It just feels wrong. It feels wrong, and they really need to do some tuning on these these. I don't know. It's, I don't know whether it's just certain elements. Well, and, and here's where I found it interesting. The tables I was having issues on are all Zoltans. Uh, yeah. Um, I yes, because in terms of, collectibles is a Zoltan. In terms of these timing issues. Um, yes. 
so it's it's this collectibles, uh, Masters of the Force, and yeah, was, Masters uh, of the and, Force. Uh, Rogue One. I think he did Rogue One. No. I'm not sure. I can't remember. The it was basically those three though that I'm having the the issues on, and yeah, right. I don't know if it's a case of because Zoltan's it's not just his layouts. He has a different mindset about the physics than Deep and Thomas Cross yes. have. Yeah. Um. So his his how he designs his tables is with a different physics set. In mind. In now, mind. The physics have not changed, but I think something has made them even more unforgiving in this transfer mm. to Unreal than what I'm noticing happen. Because I'm not having a problem playing Jedi. I'm not having a problem playing A New Hope. I'm not having a problem at all. No. Other than it being difficult playing Mandalorian. Those are all deep tables. So. Yeah. And you're um, right. All those ones are actually playing. Just as they do in FX3, like I've noticed zero difference in timing, zero difference right. in flipper behavior. They're all very consistent, but you're right. It seems to be Zoltan's tables. Yeah. So, so I find maybe that, that's something I that Zen can investigate. I if, yeah. I don't know if they all had to, you know, sign off on their tables after the fact and, you know, maybe it didn't get tested properly or something. I don't know. I don't know if VR is being used as a test bed. Um, to figure out these problems. Pretty much guarantee it is, Chris. Let's be serious. Like it's their first foray into Unreal. They are yeah. absolutely experimenting in the wild with this. Jared, Relieving wipe your screen. Effects. Wipe your screen. Oh, oh there it went. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, there we go. Black. <laughs> I, had a, I had a bug. Yes. I had a bug on my face. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This could be spot the graphical anomalies on Jared. Uh, <laughs> change the it's title. It's a glitch in the Matrix, folks. <laughs> right. Watch it. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's. <clears throat> I was having that issue, but then mm. once I figured out how to kind of circumnavigate around Work those around issues, it. yeah, mm. uh, other issues then popped up, and these have nothing to do with Unreal. This has everything to do with the code, because right. this table is brutal. <laughs> mm. In yes. terms of like, Jared's not kidding. It's a spell arama. So you oh, have, you spell you have a ramp right thing. here that is courage. You have to yeah. spell courage, and that then gives you a ball that pops over here. You have mm. to do this three times in order to finally release these balls for multi ball, which then automatically oh it doesn't automatically then you have to shoot the because they're like ceramic balls and you got your metal ball you have to shoot have the metal ball get captured by the the pop bumper, which then will raise, and then you have to sink the three balls into this area. That's how you uh, basically play Courage Multiball. But it takes forever to get Courage Multiball started, because think about it. C-O-U-R-A-G-E. 21 times you have to hit that ramp in order to start the thing. That's yeah. a ridiculous oh. amount of times to start a multiball. Oh, I, and it's I not hate the Bellarama so much. And it's not the only one. Over here, this ramp over here uh, is Smuggle, I believe. Yeah. S M U G G L E. Yeah, seven. Another again. six. So you have to, <laughs> you have to spell Smuggle, and that then opens up this. There's a gate on the back of this ramp here. And mm. that opens up so that the the ball will come here and basically start the mini game. On mm. and there's two different mini games in the Falcon. One of them is four targets to the back of the Falcon. You've got two flippers, and you have to flip and light the four targets. And then the other mini game is, uh, was it twelve holes? Is it a four by four or a four by three grid? I'm not sure what yeah, the grid is. Yeah, it's got like is. an arm that comes very much like Johnny Mnemonic. Johnny Mnemonic. But n steering the arm is oh, not so intuitive so in hard. the least. It I is hate it. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the worst claw oh, game it's... ever. And not only that, if you drop the ball and it doesn't land, let alone landing in the correct hole, if it doesn't land in any hole, there's no ball lock and it, basically, you just wasted it, and now you have to shoot another seven times in order yeah. to get it going. So that's what I mean by it's absolutely brutal in terms of it's punishing you. It's not... You spend all this time oh. getting something open, and then you get one really quick fleeting shot at success, 
And if you fail, oh, well, you're back at square one. And you have to do yep. that. You have to lock three times. So, again, 21 successful shots, three successful times of dropping it in a hole in order to start that multi-ball. And if you want to get the, the true goal, you needed to actually drop the ball in the lit spots that it wants you to drop them in. You good luck with that because there's no there's no perspective up in that area of the play field. No. Like you don't know where the ball is hovering. Like on Johnny Mnemonic, the it's claw functions as such. It's like, you know, the, you can get down, you have a look where the ball is lined yeah. up, and then it's such a close, yeah, a close drop. But this is like that. Right. You know? It could be anywhere. Like <laughs> I have no idea where the thing's going. Yeah. It's a really frustrating mechanic on this game it needs like a little ret a reticle or something a reticule or a that, spotlight that something. shows where the thing is going maybe it does it on fx3 because of the graphics mode and it's missing on this it doesn't no it's just it's just it's mm, just they need to add it in it's it's so frustrating and, and you're right if you screw up because of the game mechanic up in that area and it's really hard to control the arm and you don't drop it anywhere near the thing yeah you're stuffed Another seven tries. Thanks very much. And Come back again. And the thing is, it's not the only instance of everything is hurry up mode, and yeah. lacks. Oh, I hate that. It's, okay, so here's another here's another fun one. Um, so if you I'm trying to think how you how it is that you do it. Uh, oh, okay. So if you've done the skill shot, you lock a ball behind the space slug. If you then shoot into this saucer, uh, that opens up a mode where you're going to be trying to shoot a TIE fighter. Okay? Oh, you're, gonna be, you're going to be doing yeah. it in one of two manners. You're either going to be doing it from third-person perspective. Han runs over into the quad cannon, quad laser, and... Uh, a little can, thing comes down on and the you side can, there. And you, yeah, so basically what happens is the ball gets locked up here. A uh, TIE fighter winds up, image appears over the top of the ball. The ball gets released and comes all the way down the ramp. And you need to shoot with the quad laser the TIE fighter. How you move that is with your flipper buttons. Moves where along the ramp you are. And then how you fire is by hitting the launch button. Which is all fine and dandy if you're using a controller. Because you can use a finger and a thumb at the same time. So you can... Mm -hmm. And what I've discovered is you have to be tracking with the TIE fighter to shoot it. You can't just be firing in one spot. And oh, is that hit right? That's why I'm it goes. failing. Nope. You have to be tracking it. So here's me on my pin sim <laughs> using the yeah. right flipper to track down. And where's my launch button? Right with where my right hand is. So I'm having mm -hmm. to use my button up on <clears> top <throat> in order to do the firing to do it. Yeah. It's not designed for pin sims. Not designed for pin sims, which makes me wonder, how in the hell do you do it? I don't know if this table is on the... I didn't check. Is this one of the it's tables not. that's included in Arcade 1-Ups? It's not? I, I don't think so, no. Because you'd have an issue. It'd be yeah, really would. difficult to complete that mode. Yep. Because um, your they right will, hand yeah. is already occupied. Um, the, well, just, it's, no it's no different to having a... Um... Um, like a, a smash button on the top of the lockdown bar that you have to hit with your left hand and your right hand. like Right, and which is what I started thinking of it as, is, oh, wait, no, just use the, the, the smash button on top. You know, and that's yeah. what I'm going to pretend I'm doing. Um, yeah, that's right. But uh, And then there's a first-person view of doing the quad laser. Exact same function. It's just now you're mm, completely behind the guns. And in VR, it looks pretty cool, but it's still wildly difficult. I've... Yeah, finally, I've only got it once. I finally I've only seen that once. Hit it once, and it was yeah, not not easy. Um, but the weird thing is though, with that with that you know um, immersion mode um, view of in the quad laser, I've only been able to get that view once while I've been playing. It was the first time I played the table. It dropped it me into immersion mode and did it. Do you not? I've know never how? been able to. Do it. No. Let me educate I you, Jared. <laughs> how, has, how do you actually okay, get into so to the activate mode? the mode folks once you have the multi-ball you have two ball multi-ball in order to activate the mode you have to hit two different uh, oh no 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 sorry I don't mean I know how to get to the mode you just shoot the, the, the space um, no but it slide. matters how you shoot it so oh, if really? you lock the ball in the <clears> sinkhole <throat> first and then shoot up here uh, in the ramp that's underneath the falcon I believe that is the one that opens up the third person view if you shoot 
the one that uh, goes up under the falcon first, and then shoot the sinkhole, then that opens up, I believe, the first person. Or it's vice versa. I can't remember which. But that's how it matters. One of them is because essentially you're choosing between the <clears throat> top quad laser and the bottom quad laser of the falcon. Really? Yes, really. Okay. <laughs> Thanks Again, for telling me that, Chris. Right? Uh, <laughs> thanks, I hate it. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to point out, there's a... Lo- <clears throat> oh, oh, here's the other one that I hate. Okay, you'll see here that there is a uh, four-bank target of stand-ups mm. in front of this rotating Death Star. The only way that you will hit these by choice is with this flipper over here. Zoltan loves his vertical flipper, and his vertical mm. flippers are really, really difficult to use because they they're completely unforgiving. Um, if you want to hit this ramp right here, which is how you do probe, lighting probe, you literally, again, it drops from this hole up here in the Falcon, typically. Yeah. It'll, the ball drops down, and the second it hits the playfield, you have to flip in order to get up that ramp. There is no yes. room. Now, if you delay just a microsecond and then flip, you might hit the S or the D. It's, it's double, it says um, Death Star, and that's yeah. what you're lighting. Uh, you might hit that top one. <clears throat> it, or you might hit the bottom one. Or you might hit the bottom well, one. Because there's really no be aiming. It's completely random what you're going to be hitting because you cannot aim. The ball is moving too fast. And the thing of it is... It's twitch is, gaming. It is just twitch twitch flipping. It's Yeah. And, and the thing of it is... is it's unreachable from either of these two flippers. Yeah, you have to use that that mini flipper, and and I don't like right. that design. That's a bad no. That's a bad layout design. It should be these should be randomized or just bash it four times and then yeah, it, works. it should just be a a like a, a four like you know like how Stern's doing like right. these big long targets that are all just like count yeah. every time you hit yeah. them. One but of those to, would be fine. But to have it be that you actually have to successfully aim and hit it properly. And guess what, folks? You have to do it. So once you do all four, this bank drops down. Then you have to shoot a ball and lock it into the Death Star, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's not It's not terribly difficult. Um, it I took mean, me th- you're gonna three miss or a couple four of, shots to get it. Yeah, you're going to miss a few, but it's not <clears> frustratingly so. Um, the problem is, is it took me forever to just do the first bank. And you have to yes. do it three times in order to do Death Star multiball. Yeah. So, so you, get, th- you get what we're getting at here. You're bashing your head against the wall, trying to complete and start, or just, excuse me, trying to just start any mode on this table. Just experience the mode for the yeah. first time. And yeah. everyone knows that when you experience something for the first time, you're never going to get it. No. And so you're punished yeah. so hard on this table for just trying to do stuff on it. And I know one of the uh, guys on Discord, and I am I want to say it's uh, M. Beeching. I'm not quite 100% sure, but I think that's who mm. it was, was saying that he had to go on this table hour and a half long, which I will say the one forgiving thing on this table is the Magna Save. Uh, it's easy to get it lit. You can bank three of them, and you can magna save literally from a center drain or from either out lane. It doesn't matter. Go, it literally sucks it back up to the magnet, doesn't it? Yes. It's yes. the most powerful <laughs> and it was, and it magna save me, I've ever it experienced. It took me a long time <clears throat> to even start using it because I was like, oh, I'll just save it for the next one. Because usually magna saves, you're like, no, I'm only going to use it under absolutely desperate. Yeah, they're precious. Yeah. And then I started using this like candy, and I was like, oh, wait, my game time has increased a long time. So anyway, he was mm. saying he played for an hour and a half. He only successfully lit. Uh, so when you lit light on the uh, play field there, that means you succeeded in doing the mission. Four. 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 And I think there's eight total. <sighs> hour and a half of playing. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that you really should, is. He should have been through at least the wizard mode twice, if with an hour and a half of playing. Yeah. Um, and it, it's what worries me with some of Zen design choices in their coding. And this is why I keep on saying they need to go revisit the codes. And, and refresh them. Refresh them, make them more fun. Because yeah. 
It's not that it's a bad layout design. It's just lacking the fun factor. We keep I'll keep on going back to Mandalorian is a punishing table, but it's but fun. But it's easy to get things started. Yeah, you, yeah, it has that, oh, just one more time. Whereas while I'm playing Han Solo, as soon as I fail a mode, I'm like, do I really want to try and load that one up again? Because, jeez yeah. Louise, it was a slog to get it going. Yeah, exactly. Only to yeah. then fail the mode within five seconds. You know? Totally. <laughs> it's... Yep, and this is, yep, yeah, you're totally right. You know what? I opened the I opened the thing and saying, yeah, it's not a bad table, but clearly I've got some issues with it. And I think you do too. I do. So I do. This discussion has been useful. And I hope, like, our opinions are just our opinions, right? But I hope Zen l- gets some feedback about this table and thinks about ways they could actually do a code update. And we talked about this idea of making these tables living tables now. Yeah. Not just treating them as a one one and done, no more fixes. Like, they need to rethink how these tables work. The, the layouts can remain, but the rules need a bump on well, these older and, and tables. And the thing is, is you can... I'm <clears throat> sure that Stern has put out code that while some of it was positive... Some of it made players go, ah, no, that you just made things worse. And then they come up with yep. another code and they fix the worst thing, but keeping the things that people liked and maybe right. like, even something beyond that. So, yeah, keep on, keep on going until you finally get to where everybody goes. A sweet spot. Good. We're, we're yeah. golden now. You know. That's right. And I, look, I'm, I don't think either of us are saying make it easier. That's no. not what we want. We, we want challenge, but just make it more fun. Yeah. Like, make it so... Like, for example, if you change the mechanic of all the sinkholes and eject holes to make it so it was very clear when the ball was coming out and very easy to get those balls, that would make a tremendous improvement to the enjoyment of the game. Um, The other thing is, like, when the the ball pops out of the Falcon, like, hold it in space so we can see it. Put it on a a magnet. Yeah, a magnet. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, hold it so we can go, okay, now I can get ready for the shot right. and actually have time to aim. Not just like plop and roll. Like literally it just right. plops and rolls. And it's the same on, I've noticed this on Wild West Rampage as well. It's going back a few years, yeah. but when it pops out of the side of the saloon, it just goes plop and roll. And it's like, just, it feels unnatural. Right. And it needs a little bit more hang time. You know what I mean? Um, absolutely. And then for like the mini games Hang with on. the Falcon, how about if you fail once, it gives you another try. It gives you a relight or like, you know, an instant relight, you know, right. just shoot it up there again and it holds it until you've had two goes. And right. if you fail twice, well then, yeah. It, like, you know, if my philosophy on the table is if you have to shoot it three times, you should have retries three times. Mm-hmm. That If they just put that mechanic in, yeah, I'd feel better about Spellathons. Yeah. But... The other aspect that they should be doing, uh, if they don't want to do any of that, then how about if you started the mode, the first time you go through it, up to the wizard, so long as you start the mode, you're doing the theater of magic wave things. Bam. It's it's, It's lit. It's collected, yeah. Once you've done the wizard mode, now you have to actually beat the mode in order to get it lit. Mm. It's not uncommon. It happens in a Mm -hmm. lot of Williams games. It happens in a lot of stern tables. You, yep. Because why? It's that first taste is for free. <laughs> exactly Second taste, right. you got to pay. You know, Easy to play, hard to master. Right, because... It's very, and, very and, same way. And, and it's something that Zen has said. Oh, well, you know, our flipper gaps are narrower and our outlanes are more forgiving and our ball save is longer because we want you to experience the story. If you really want us to experience the story, let us experience the modes. Let us That's right. you know, experience all that. So... The other factor that popped in with this table, um, and we'll just, again, a refresher here. Hey, there's that lovely DMD without any of the D or the M. Um, Yeah, it's a D. (laughs) It's just a D. Um, It's a D, all right. There are a lot of instructions that pop up on this. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know either (laughs) because I'm too busy watching the ball. And the thing is... Pop out of things. And the thing is, is that the instructions then disappear and never show up again. So it's not even They're like not I can hold the ball on, you know, capture the ball on the flipper and then look up and read what the instructions are. Um, we keep on harping on Zen to improve 
the information instructional design yep. inside the pinball yep. games. You like, need to this let us is... have a chance to read the instructions. And a common way of doing that is being able to at least trap the ball so we can read it. Or, here's the easy way, have a voice call out, tell us what to do. <laughs> yes, and keep on calling it out. Like, you've got the sound likes in the studio booth, yeah. getting to do a few more call-outs. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. So many things that would make the game experience better. Um, but it doesn't... It, it wouldn't take much. Anyhow... Anyhow, Enough that's griping. that solo. I wore the appropriate shirt, my guitar yeah. solo shirt. Guitar um, solo. I think it's excellent. Yes. Um, uh, I didn't. I just got another pinball shirt on. Yep. Um, <laughs> so we, we were going to talk about other things as well, but geez, this whole episode seems to be <laughs> solo hating. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's going to be the title of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on oh, so to solo the... constructive criticisms. And, yeah. And... Well, it's, mm. and it's but it's not relegated to purely solo. We're just picking on solo because I it was free. It's new and it's, it's new, free and new. And I spent a lot of time since it was new and free. And you know, I was like, hey, you know what? I really don't think I've played this. Let me give it a crack. And because yeah. uh, I like the look of the table. Yeah, I, I think it's, it. I it's think layout's it, fun. The layout it's, is it's, fun. The colors are bright. Um, it it's. The theme is really well integrated. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of good things about this table. Don't get us wrong. Like, we're not hating on this table because, you know, it's new. And, it, you know, the fact that they've gone and released this table for free as an upgrade, mm -hmm. like, awesome. It's really, that it really would good. only take a few tweaks through the code to make it amazing. Way, made it, way better. So much more In fact, enjoyable. it would probably would become one of my favorite tables in the collection if they did some tweaks to the code. Yeah. It's got a lot of good things happening in it. I just wish they'd go back and revisit, right? So let's instead visit what uh, Zen has planned for Been the Been dropping in the pinball show. <laughs> the um, pinball show. Yeah, so the pinball show... Oh, there we go. All right, so the pinball show uh, mm -hmm. has announced two of their three Zen original tables. We made mention of Noir. We didn't bother showing you a picture. And then this last time they made mention of this uh, mystery pirate... Uh, steampunk themed, and we'll show you mm. that also. So let's take a quick look um, here at Noir. So as you can see, you know, nice use of black and white. We got some, uh, you know, amber-hued lighting. Hey, look, Jared, it's the insert uh, lights that I wanted. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, your, your classics, yeah. although these down here are not, I don't think, jeweled. Classics. I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe not, they not aren't. Not faceted. No. Not faceted. Um, I would hope. But you know what? I originally, when I looked at this, I thought, "Oh, it's a Munsters Limited Edition." <laughs> That's totally what I saw when I saw this table. You know, now, because that one's all black. Now, uh, black and white. Interesting things with regards to comments and everything. People are like, "Oh my god, it doesn't look like they're very far on this, folks." That's because they're not. <laughs> well, well, no, I don't know if it's not that they're not very far. <clears throat> I'm thinking they're showing you their early stages of work that they might have completed months and months ago. Again, mm. remember, we had been told they had two tables, Zen Originals, that were in the design stage, and they were supposed to have been released about a year ago. Yes. So I think in order to string you along, keep your interest, to, you know, feel like you're part of the process as it happens, they're showing you early renderings but this of not... what was done a while ago right but this is not necessarily final design how do i know mm. that if i'm just looking at this table right here there's a lot of 2d objects that phone this the coffee the lipstick all these bullets all very much 2d all this this phone booth 2d this 2D. car is a total placeholder that is not a 3d yeah. model that zen made um no. this ramp is i don't know what that ramp is ridiculous yeah, <laughs> it is. It, it is that feels very much like a placeholder ramp to me. That's I'd, a I'd, lot well, of switchbacks, and that would take the, the ball a long time to feed down. And unless and this is what everyone has said, like they're going, please, please do something creative with that thing at the back there because I don't want to be spending all my time in it. Uh -uh. Um, yeah, and if it's used them. for locking balls, then like like I said, if that's a twenty-one ball lock mechanism, then sure. count me in. Sure, yeah, like but, like flight two thousand, right? Uh, oh yeah, a little bit like flight or mm. like Apollo thirteen, mm -hmm. which 
you know, well, I'm saying Fight 2000 like had that really funky, yeah, and that was cool. Um, but this makes something cool like that, but right, this is just, just a ramp you shoot. <laughs> no, thank uh, you. I yeah. assume yeah. back here looks like a rotating play field of, yeah, of sorts, something like that. I don't know. Um, so I just wanted to kind of point out that don't take this as a final render. No, um, this is very, this looks very much like a work in progress. Just here is, think, think of this as like, this is a taster of the theme. It's certainly nowhere near final, yeah. right? Um, so what you need to take away from this playful render, it's a black and white theme in the style of the 1930s and 20s. Um, it's got a very almost cell shaded feel to it. I have a look at all those lights and objects in the play field. It's very cell shaded in its graphical style. Um, so those are the things you should be looking at, not at face value of the table. And I believe that's going to change. This is designed by the same guy that did Paranormal, which I'm not sure exactly who that was. Off the top I can't of my head. recall either. I want to say that, that that's what they said. And if it is, <clears> I <throat> actually kind of wish they just get the same voice actor. And it makes it great. Make it just a sequel to Paranormal. Um, yes, you know because yeah. that that Paranormal definitely had that hard boiled. Oh yeah, it was great. Kind of the voice detective. in that was awesome. Yeah, you know this could be this could be because it was detective style. Like you know mm -hmm. it had a like a, an early nineteen hundreds feel to it. That table anyhow. Yeah. Um. So they could easily do a sequel to to that in this. Um. Anyhow, where I, I would uh, here's my issues with with what I'm saying though right now, and it does all center around this ramp. That mm, is really does. I don't like it at all. Of blah. There's yep, that no is bling. a huge nope. It's just a lot of what's underneath the play field. God only knows. We don't. It, it's you know. There's you know what no it reminds lighting. me of. There's it no reminds lighting. me of Lombard Street. Right, which I think is the whole point. It, it, it's. Yeah, it's probably trying to emulate Lombard Street because mm -hmm. you have a look in the background there. There's a road. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, it's probably Lombard Street in San Francisco. Yeah. So I get that, but, but yeah, please it, don't send so the ball up there is, all the time. Lombard is, Street is a bad street to go on. Just <clears throat> put some color on there. Line, put some lighting on here. Make it interesting to look at. It's make it look like a street. Maybe take a couple of bends out because Lombard Street doesn't have that many bends. I don't, I don't think. Know. It, it just... <laughs> I would rather see the <clears throat> tilt play field for being Lombard. Yeah, put something cool like that up there. I don't know. It, it just it needs something back there. I don't know. Something what's going exciting on. up there because the rest of the table <clears throat> doesn't really look super exciting. And if you're really going for that noir look, noir lighting shadows, baby. It's shadow and contrast. So yep. if you're gonna do that then you need to really... Here's a case where I'm like, your ambient room needs to be dark. And the yep. light show has to be on point. The lights really have to be telling... Um, Super contrasted lights. Like, they need to be very harsh. There like, you need to spotlight to, areas on the play field, right? I was going to say, there almost needs to be a, a fog over the whole play field so that be cool. shafts of light Right? Yes. Instead of just well, you know general using Unreal, it's, it's using Unreal, light. it does that well. Yeah. So take advantage of it. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Anyhow. So anyhow, that's that's noir. And then the other mm -hmm. table that they introduced. Um, so we guessed that it was going to be a. Well, they said it was going to be a pirate theme because they went ah, and so we were like, we oh. thought Dreadnoughtical, and then we thought Dreadnoughtical. We were we were wrong. Um, Instead, mm. it's Melkirk Space Pirate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which, I say, I, have to that, admit that. I say that because, boy, does that look like Mel. Especially with his it, long hair these days. Um, it really does. Yep. So here is their their steampunk vibe. They call it pirate steampunk kind of vibe thing. Thing. Uh, it's an airship, which I believe they're calling the Marangoth. Um, they've got a fictional land. Uh, it's I like this layout a lot more. It's Pirates of the Sky kind of thing. I like the yeah. layout, but I'm also kind of... There's something that's not appealing to me. And it has to do with... It looks like miniature golf back here. <laughs> yeah, um, I could I could see where you go with that. It's, it's, like very, it does. it's very flat. Even though we have a ramp At here, the moment. this is like ramps that they were using... 
in you know 1984 where it's we elevated the ball slightly but yes we got the, it off the play field for a bit the fact that the ramps are just going <clears throat> along the side here again there's no crossover there's no uh interest to me on looks that. like there's an interesting mechanism bottom left which which looks like Cannons. a cannon firing yeah, mechanism yeah cannon fires there's also this mechanism here which obviously is your ball launch i'm assuming skill shot uh, yep. landing in the holes here um yep. Yeah, it's all got like the, the pistons and the actuators and stuff in that area too. Like it's it's definitely they've got the theme. Yeah, we've like got again, some in, kind of a rotating thing going on back. Looks a little here. bit like space station. Uh, space station's rotating cam right. that redirects the ball around. Hey, right, cool. Um, Whatever. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not. Again, it looks like this is probably a mission hole. Yeah, it's a mission hole. I'm guessing. Um, and it looks like where your mouse is there at the flipper. moment. Which looks like the only way to shoot this area over here would be yeah with that and ramp. where where your mouse was just where the uh, the round bit is there just below that thing you'll see a little void in the plastic that looks like a flipper as well not there over the little bit more to the right yeah right there. there oh I reckon that's a flipper that's a flipper void that. right there mm -hmm. uh huh yep and up yeah. into that uh that upper ramp area. Um, so yeah, that definitely looks like a flu. So it looks like a four flipper game. God, if it has so, that, if it has that there, that reminds me of Biolab. Uh, and yeah, reminds me of of um, Earth Defenders. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, which I'm not a fan of that because <clears throat> that flipper, do you forget it's even there? That's right. It's such it's hard odd, to see. It's it's hard to see. It just gets buried into there. Um, again, early, early render you can see because even our the figure is flat. Yeah, he's he's flat. This he's a cardboard cutout. This That's looks flat. like it's it's completely flat when that should be a three D render. I'm gonna assume mm -hmm. it's gonna be floating around. I assume they're yep. saying things about like rocks are falling and air attacks. Well, then I, there better be a lot of like explosions happening again. Oh, um, I could think we can expect that on this table. Like, um, I'm just I'm just trying to help them with their lighting their light show again oh, i want a light i want game. a light show with the inserts and with what's yeah. going on not necessarily <clears throat> atmosphere i mean i do want atmospheric lighting but um and this one's going to need it you like know. you know on stern and even like jersey jack does this really well too is that when the ball is being ejected from somewhere the whole playfield lights go down if the ball is ejecting down or across if the ball is out ejecting mm -hmm. like that like it tells you mm -hmm. the direction before the ball ejects so you know oh it's it's that one up there and like you know it'll have a flasher going hey the ball's here and it's ejecting this way yeah that's the sort of thing we need to start seeing in their light shows just take cues like go and study how these light shows work on um sterns and jersey jacks and do that. That's that. And if you do that, it's going to be great. Because um, I mean, you think about think about like Circus Voltaire. Half yeah, of that table is the lighting show. It really is. It's amazing that table. If, and they've if, done. That's a really good. If it didn't have the light show, example. it'd be such. I mean, it'd, it'd be, be a snore fest. Yeah, it, it would be comet. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, so again, I'm not going to be terribly critical off of a basic render of an early design. No. Um, it's just things that I would like to see. Again, to me, it's very flat back here. Um, this is, th this reminds <clears throat> me of a mid eighties or early, early, early to mid eighties prior to them putting ramps on tables. Um, it's yeah. just a very, there's not elevation for the ball. It's like a, a bit of like a five power two. Like, yeah. uh, because it had a, a couple of it had a big feature on it with the ramp that took the ball up off the play field. Which, and that was if like that's thing, what but... you're going for, more power to you. Um, but that means you're going to have to make some interesting gameplay choices. Uh, yeah, you are to keep your interest going. Um, I mean, we saw this a little bit in Octo Island, in um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, yep. in the Star Wars collection, it was very flat and quite green it was very well obviously because it was on an island yeah the but it had similar things and they managed to make that look interesting even though it was really quite flat um so they can do it and i'm sure they will do it they just probably have a lot of placeholder stuff like i would imagine 
that that the the golf tee area up the back is going to be mountains. <laughs> Um, it's you know, like where the golfers like, are now you, hiding. Now you see it. Doesn't it look like miniature golf? Look, we even got some cannons back here that I would love. To, I hope that is going to be firing balls, yeah, landing yeah. places. Yep. Um, that would be great if the if it was doing exactly that. Um, you know, you mm. got some treasure chests back here that I you know hope things are happening back <laughs> there, lighting wise. Um, yep. But that, it, that green area, right it's going to be mountains. That just that like just, this. Little I think it's going to be mountains and stuff. I just, yeah, I expect there to be a windmill. <laughs> something yeah a windmill and then like a clown right that you can shoot the ball between exactly yeah. exactly yeah, it's got to be a windmill every every <laughs> mini golf course has a windmill of some description doesn't it yeah. now something that uh the reason why we haven't said what the name of this table is because zen doesn't even know what the name of this table is so they they're were getting looking, you to name it yeah they were looking for people to uh, name it now i'm sure that that contest is well and done uh, because because they received with, thousands of submissions. Right. Good luck trying to filter through those. Right. So I thought I would announce what my uh, submissions were, and Jared, you can tell me, tell me if I was well, uh, way off base, or if you would go, oh, that would attract me, if, just by if you heard the title and you were walking by the machine. Yep. First one, Sky Skellywags. No. No. Too okay. many syllables. Okay. Aeronaut Marauders. Maybe. Because they are an aeronaut if they're flying an airship, and Marauders is another name for pirates. Correct. Um, okay, this one's the comical Arg Anots. No. <laughs> um, Rap Scallions Revenge. Mm, Rap Scallions. Eh, uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Um, maybe. Rogues Plunder. Rogues plunder. Mm -hmm. So that would mean the character's name was Rogue. No, no, a pirate. <laughs> a pi another name for pirate is a rogue. Yep. And uh, uh, and rogues plunder. What do they plunder, Chris? They plunder treasure. <laughs> you see what I'm getting at? I'm looking at this grammatically, and I'm reading way too much into it. Anyhow, so. next. Um, <laughs> Marauders of the Marengoth. Now that's. That sounds it tells good. a little story right there, right? It does yeah. I think that one's got some promise. That I'd put that on a short list. Okay. I'd um, buy that for a dollar. All right. And then my last one, just because it was too obvious and too funny. Dread Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but I, I you could never do it. Why? <laughs> I just Dread Zeppelin would be like I, I actually think Dread Zeppelin was the name of a cover band. Of Led Zeppelin oh, back totally, in the day I, that played reggae covers sure of was. Led Zeppelin songs. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, that's uh, awesome. I'm dead serious. I think I believe that they played here in Orange County when I was in college a lot. That's fantastic. Um, I love that. I love so, the mashup band. Yeah. But yeah, I'd I'd I'd, I'd like that because <laughs> I'm because I love a good pun. But I don't think. Let me just wipe my weird face screen off. Okay. <laughs> There that. we go. Look, I cleaned it up. <laughs> Jared got a makeover. <laughs> I just, just like that. Just like that. It's done. Yours for only nineteen ninety five a month. Um, That's right. Yep. All right. <laughs> so anyway, we'll 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 have to see what uh, what name Zen winds up coming up with for this thing. Hopefully. So here's not. the thing with names, right? Yeah. Like uh, of the names that you said, there there were some good ones in there. Um, I think bring the name of the ship or something that that Mel dropped. The reason why, you essentially, you know, folks, Mel kind of gave everyone the brief. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In that thing that he did, that was the reason why he was going into details of it, so that you could pick the right name. So, have a think about the names that you see on pinball machines now in the arcades. They're they're not a sentence. They're usually no more than two words. And those words don't have a lot of syllables in them. So you think Rick and Morty. Think Iron Maiden. Star Wars. Um, and yes, sure, these are all brands as well. Um, but even Medieval Madness. Two words, not a lot of syllables in them, right? So I think if Zen is smart, they're going to look at um, things that don't have too many words in them. And don't have too many syllables because it, it comes down to a real estate issue on the back glass and in the game and all that sort of stuff. 
and I, menus in, I just as well. They pick something better than Adventureland. As much as I like Adventureland, mm-hmm. it's a generic title that should be on a Zacharia table. Because mm. <laughs> I agree there, and, and I'm going to say that. Think about Zacharia. Boy, did they clown karate yeah. or, or, or kung fu, whatever it was, black belt. Um, black belt. It's, uh, I mean, it, see, that's a good example. Pool ex- that, champion. It's like, okay, can you get generic any more eyes. generic? Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see what they choose. I would predict that they're going to be choosing. They're going to be modeling the name of what you see on pinball machines. Wait, I got now, a new one. Format. I got a new one because it's steampunk, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And what do pirates do? They loot things. So it's punky looters. Punky looters, like punky Brewster. Yes. I know we were going there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> punky looters. Uh, please don't use that one, Sam. Um, no. Oh, don't worry. I think you're pretty safe there. <laughs> <laughs> but good on you for submitting your names. I think there's a couple of good ones in there. We will see what happens. Yep, we sure will. Oh, oh and I should say the prize for if uh, of the winner, you get to be the named the captain. Yeah. So here's where, unfortunately, Jared, you really needed to submit things so that we could have had Captain Morgan. Cap- oh no! It's such a missed opportunity, <laughs> Captain Morgan. It's it's such a pirate name. And, yep. You know, not not the name of a, a particular rum brand or anything at all. No. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> it's a very odd. Oh, on the side note, there's a very odd campaign for Captain Morgan rum down here. Uh, there's this ad, and they go, Captain, 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 and they just like all these people in the bar just raising a glass of rum. Going captain, like you know, hat yeah. tip captain. Everyone's captain, and they—it's <laughs> it's very strange. So yes, that that brand does stick in my mind. I'm not a rum drinker though. I'm a gin drinker. I'm a Slurpee drinker. Um, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> rum and me do not mix well at all. No, um... they don't mix well with anyone really, but people still drink it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that was uh, that was really all that we have uh, for you all this week. We just wanted to kind of uh, touch a bit, do some pinball focused stuff. Yeah, touch a bit week. about what was going on in the pinball show, but also uh, obviously, again, it was really cool that Han Solo wound up being free. Um, but it does just hey, if you're going to throw something in front of me, then I'm going to take a look at it, and then I might be critical. And now is the time, we keep on saying this, before Pinifex comes out, now is the time to make tweaks and changes and differences because Pinball Effects 3 is locked in. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. That's fine. You want to Bug attract... Bug fixes only. Right. You, you're, you can't transfer your tables to Pinifex. So here they are new. It's going to be brand new leaderboards. It's going to be brand new everything. How about doing that code update. You did it when you went from FX2 to FX3 with Epic Quest and Mars. They were subtle differences, but they made a huge... They were great. They were great, great choices. Pick. Yeah, great choices really, really good. Epic Quest was choices. definitely one of those where it was just like, oh my God, I got to do bats or skeletons again. Yeah. Like, can I please end this mode? And then when they switched to FX3, suddenly it was like, oh, those were brief and we're just all about collecting the board things, things yeah. so that we can get to the wizard mode, you know, and that was such a brilliant choice. And then thing, same thing with Mars where it made progressing through the different modes so much more intuitive and so much easier than this convoluted mess. Um, do the same thing, yep. update these things. Yep. Take the same approach. Do it. Like, again, it's you're gonna... already, you right. already got your hands and fingers all over these. I'm sure that I hope somebody was like, hey, while we're at it, I don't know. That's- Hopefully it's just part of the iterations they got planned, the inevitable iterations they got planned for these tables in Unreal. Like, yeah. I really do hope that that's part of their strategy because it's the right strategy yep. and they should be doing it. But that is all that we were uh, planning on uh, chatting about today. Yes. And, uh, you know, we'll be back two weeks from now. We'll have other things to chat about. What they are, Jared will tell you. Stuff and things. Until then, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.